here at the Perth Motorplex for the 60th Australian Spring Car Championship. It is the last night, the final night tonight. We crown an A1, and it looks like probably the current champion, Marcus Dumsley, uh, might not be in contention uh, to defend his title. So we could have a new A1 by the end of tonight, most likely. But uh, if you haven't been to the Perth Motorplex before, it is a beautiful venue. I don't know any racetrack <laughs> in the world, not a speedway venue that is half as good as this place. It is absolutely incredible. The drive-in uh, with all the lanes and just just a full experience you feel like you're at a premier venue and it really is and it is first class and I'm so glad that uh, the Australian Spring Car Championship is here this weekend. Tonight we have the last round of heats before we go into the mains. The last round of heats is an invert of six so you got uh, top points Jamie Veal and guys like Lockin McHugh and Jock Goodyear who are in the top three. Uh, they're all started out of six in their heat so it's really important that they move forward as, as much as they can to ensure that they, they're starting up the first uh, few rows because those guys drive so aggressively right from the start that they're going to be tough to beat. But really tonight we really just want to get as many interviews as possible whether they're racers, former racers, legends of the sport, people with the in, within the industry. We just want to uh, cover the whole event for you guys so let's go speak to some of those people now. Having fun out west, man? <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit of an initiation, that's for sure. It's, um, yeah, big track stuff's a bit uh, interesting just to get our head around setup-wise, but um, yeah, we've got a heat race tonight just to sort of make it up and hopefully get to the front of the B and then um, yeah, see if we can transfer through. What is, what is your plan for the heat? Do you feel like you really need to make hay or are you just trying to consolidate? Or? Mm, look, yeah, we've tried a new setup. We really haven't been comfortable all weekend, so um, yeah, see if the new setup works and um, we missed the invert so we're starting seventh so we've got fast guys in front of us and then uh, obviously got to move forward to get some points so I'll, I'll have a crack and see if we can get any more rows further forward and um, yeah, see if it makes it easy to get through the B and the A. How are you feeling after the wreck? Yeah, not too bad. Um, a bit battered and bruised but yeah, got a new car together and yeah, we're here. And uh, I was talking to Andrew Shirley before and he said that you guys are torn up some gear, did you think that you should go back home or you were pretty keen to come out here? No, I wanted to go back home and um, regroup a little bit more in a short time, but at least we have everything home. So um, but yeah, we, we came straight here and I came here Monday, I think, and we stayed at Jason Pride. So um, big thanks to that family and all those boys there, they're a massive help. So um, yeah, got it all rebuilt and went out and ran Wednesday and got caught up in another driver then as well. So that ripped a few things out. So. Um, yeah, fix all that and we're out again for Friday, so. What do you think of the motor play? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's hard to get used to at the start because it's just so so fast. I'm not really used to that, so. Yeah. We're sort of wrapping around it now, still finding our setup a little bit, but um, we're probably on the wrong day to be where we're at, so yeah. it's a bit of a pain, but anyway. How'd this deal come about? Pretty quickly, actually. I had a phone call from Rick and uh, actually had a phone call from Mouse and he said to answer the phone when Rick calls and uh, yeah, he uh, gives a call and talks to us about the team and, and then I talked with Shannon and Shannon done the deal and it all come about pretty quickly, actually. You're enjoying being in this car? Yeah, definitely. Um, good experience to come over in West Australia have a run. Uh, never been over here before in a sprint car. Uh, a lot of long time ago coming to Dirt Modified and just did a practice night here. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, that was about all the laps I've done here and um, pretty good overall. We just struggled a couple of times with a bit of bad luck in one of the heats and lost some points. Um, but yeah, tonight we just missed the invert and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a good shot. Can you explain the differences between your car and this car and maybe what you've had to do with the driving style or setup changes? That, uh... Yeah, there's not a lot different to tell you honest truth. Um, um, but yeah, the, the, the chassis is one of ours that we sent over. Um, we did a deal that he was going to replace ones just so all the seat and everything fitted in the short time that we had. So it pretty well bolted together, same as what we had. And um, yeah, got all new bars and all the stuff that's fairly similar to what we run. So there's not a lot that's real different. Raz, people want to hear from you. What's it take to win at the Plex? Oh, obviously a good car and a good motor, but... Uh, good driver? Good determination, Yeah, I suppose, at the end of the day. Um, but you've got to get yourself up the front, you know, during all the heat races and, and qualifying, and yeah, you, know, you go from there. Where does the Australian title win here uh, in 09 rank? Uh, well, obviously, it's pretty good because it's been the last one so far. Really? Yeah, well, it's not too well, it's the last one I won. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. But it's not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, every Australian title ranks, ranks are very high. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a prestigious race to win. I mean, that's, as a kid growing up, that's what you want to do and yeah. that's what you strive for. It's like being in America wanting to win their World of Outlaw race. So, um, you know, I think all Australians actually 
like I say, means a lot to him. So you know, you put 110 percent effort in, and yeah, it's just very hard, to, very hard to win. So yeah, when you get him, you got to appreciate it. You didn't want to race here this weekend. Uh, well, for a start, you got to do three shows or five shows now, yeah. whatever, before you're allowed to race yeah. um, in, a, in an Australian title. But uh, no, I was just bringing Jordan over. We sold that big semi trailer and we just got one car yeah. in this one. So, but like I said just before, it's you know you never know. I haven't retired yet, so yeah. I might be back at Warrnambool next year. It's uh, where I won my first one, and I don't know. You never know. Feeling good going into tonight? Yeah, mate. Yeah, we're all good. Obviously, got this heat race to get through in a minute. Um, just come out of six. Heat two, so um, get through that, make some, make up some positions, and um, hopefully put ourselves on the front row, or close to the front row for the for the main race. I noticed the last, oh, there's a few races recently where your car stopped. Did you end up finding out where, the where one at Toowoomba? We have no idea. It stopped. It's electrical. It's a heat thing. Yeah. So we actually put the ram tubes back in it. We washed them that night and put the ram tubes in the mag box back on the next morning. It fired straight up. So I changed. Everything that could be electrical or is electrical on that car, which is not a whole lot, it got replaced and we haven't had a problem. Murray Bridge the other night, we had a chunk of mud knock a nozzle line loose, yep. which is, I didn't have nozzle guards on, never have, but we do now. So that was, yeah, it's a bit of luck, I guess, but um, yeah, I've never had an electrical problem either, but it's first time for everything. Uh, tonight, uh, obviously, last night, you would have tried a few things for the feature. You still look pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we weren't bad in the heats. Um, first heat were really good, second heat not as good, so we threw something at it for the feature. It was a bit of a test run, really, half point increments on the A main, so it wasn't a big deal to finish it, and he felt really good, and we know we can be better tonight, so, you know, hopefully we get similar racetrack and we can put it all into play. Just the one car tonight, mate. Yeah, unfortunately, Toby Dane uh, had a par fail last night coming out of four there in the heat race and uh, poked it in the fence and the frame damage was pretty bad and uh, the damage to the points was probably just as bad as the frame damage. So uh, we were 33rd, I think, on points. You're outside of that top 26, uh, so you missed it invert, so you're sort of starting the fairway back. Uh, our parts inventory has copped a bit of a sort of a little bit depleted after the last couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of made the decision to park it tonight for where we'd be starting and uh, sort of go into preservation mode with that car and then uh, kind of come back next week for the boys race which is back being a SCG points race which is kind of like the bigger picture for yep. us with Dane so unfortunately yeah back to one not what we wanted to do but victim of circumstance. What's it been like running two cars? Uh, it's like children one's a lot two's a thousand <laughs> I feel like uh, it's been really good and we've got some really good help we basically have four people on each car which has been good. Wow. Uh, yeah, the Pidar team, uh, who's a limited team, they, uh, they uh, who's a, also a Bunbury team, they gave us a hand and lent us their truck and trailer and uh, pretty much all their crew guys really and uh, I had Moth, Tim Gleeson come over this weekend to give us a hand uh, with Dane, which was, which was huge. Uh, he's going to come back and do the boys race with him as well, so um, yeah, it's a, a lot of work at the track and at the shop, but uh, I feel like we've done pretty well with it, yeah. Is Kerry coming back next year? Uh, I haven't had that conversation yet. If he wins tonight, he's going to have to. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I'm banking on. But yeah, uh, yeah the title's in uh, uh, in Warno next year, and then Warno next year, the week after the Classic. So uh, we might do something similar, maybe just do Classic Week, Aussie title. Uh, but yeah, we haven't even had that conversation yet, to be honest. One 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 night at a time, one weekend at a time. It's time for the first heat of the night. We're on Callum Williamson's car. He's out of position number four in the first heat. He really needs to move forward, like I always say about these heat previews. He runs the wall, so we put the camera on the outside facing forward. Should be fun to watch. We're in front of a packed crowd. Apparently this place fits about 12,000 people and it looks, it looks pretty full to me. So probably, probably the biggest crowd at any speedway throughout the year here in Australia. Let's do it.
just, uh, I don't know what happened, but I don't know if the engine's gone or something like that, but he's out of his heat race, so that means he'll drop into points for sure if guys like Lockie McHugh and Jock Goodyear finish the race. So Jamie's over there looking now at his engine, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's his night. Kind of hampered big time, but Ron Callum Williamson's car are about to go green again. He's out of position number two. Good to see a slide job into turn number one. Hopefully he can make some moves and potentially be starting up a pole tonight. Two cars. Uh, it's not too bad. I don't really just kind of help the guys out on Jason's car and look yep. after Robbie's mainly, so it's not too bad. And uh, you guys haven't had the strongest run this season? No, we struggled a bit, mate. I don't know for what reason, but it just, just hasn't really worked out. But happy to make a feature and hopefully we can make a few changes and get her up the front. What's it like working with Robbie compared to Jason as far as setting the cars up? Uh, two completely different drivers. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robbie's old school, Jason's kind of just, Jason's got a different feel to a lot of the guys out here, so. Can you explain yeah, like what you, what you do then? Like what does that mean? Uh, Robbie just likes to feel the car, Jason just likes to be a bit freer and kind of be able to move around and just, yeah, just kind of be comfortable, I guess. How have you been running, man? Uh, yeah, pretty good tonight, sort of struggled previously, but I uh, made a lot of changes to the car today and feel pretty comfortable, so uh, we won our heat race. I think we start 17th in the A. You didn't race at uh, Murray Bridge last weekend. Were you still on a high after the <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't really want to um, just do a race sort of the week before the Aussie title. So just we've got a few shows over here and if you uh, lose a car or something like that, it makes it a lot of, a lot of hard work. So uh, we sort of uh, rested and recovered and, and get ready for a big feature race tonight.
pros have gone over the car and they've been looking at the track so I think it's maybe going to be a little bit hammered down but I'm going to get out there and pound it. What's the game plan? You're starting from... What from I'm starting out of eight so obviously you know so everyone's come over here to travel so make sure to get a few laps in and, and don't you know do anything silly so yeah. get a few laps in and then go from there if the track starts to widen up and there's opportunities to pass we're definitely going to take it. What's your biggest doubt? Um, time to get to the front or... Yeah, I don't know. I think as the laps uh, count down, the fuel load comes off. I think, you know, we just have to get up and boogie a little bit. Just can't miss those opportunities in the Australian Toll. Someone else is going to make those opportunities if you don't make them. So just make sure you're on the hammer every, every lap. Where are you starting? Uh, fifth row outside 10. So yeah. uh, we'll be right. Yeah. What kind of track? So I'm going to do from there. Confident in the car? Yeah, the car feels good tonight. So well balanced. Uh, Feel good. I like this style of track too, so yep. we should uh, hopefully get going, mate. Make a few spots and uh, long race, 35 laps to see where we end up. You drive with a big crowd, or I love it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I haven't seen. Uh, just saying to the boys, I haven't seen a crowd like this since uh, the year we won World Series because we had like 10 Yanks here that year, yeah. and it was just chockers, it was madness like this. Uh, yeah. So cool to see this place packed out and uh, you know, showed off to its full potential. Um, and you just the energy you get off this, you just you just thrive off it. So nothing like it, mate. It's exciting. Out of five. Ooh, you feeling good? Yeah, yeah, feeling good. I think the track's gonna be pretty fast, but um, it might actually create multiple lanes. So I guess we'll just find out. Going into this weekend, obviously changing cars recently and things like that. Did you have high expectations? Oh yeah, I had high expectations, but um. To be honest, coming into the weekend, I wasn't overly confident. Uh, this car was making me nervous. wasn't doing the things that it sh uh, should be doing. And, um, yeah, it just didn't give me the confidence. But um, I just dug deep on Friday night and just tried to block all that out, and, and it's uh, working so far. What's the game plan for the feature? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I think I'm just going to have to work it out as, as we're out there, and I think um, just try and keep hold, at least hold my position at the start and um, maybe even pick a, a few off and to see what the front runners do there and hopefully get into a bit of a battle and yep. I can sneak by them. That was a solid heat, how'd you feel out there? No, we're pretty good. Um, now just turn our eyes to the 35 we've got ahead. Yep. It's got to be consistent and I don't know, just be there at the end and just see what we can do. You're off hold, do you have a bit of a game plan with how to race Lockie? <laughs> I know you race him a fair bit, but uh, guys like him, Cal Williamson, you have to expect Jamie will make his way through as well. Yeah, I don't know, you just take it as another race, obviously you just know everyone out here is going to race you hard and we're just going to race as hard as we can for 35 laps, so we'll just, there's no real game plan, just send it out there and just go for it and just see how the car changes throughout the race and yeah, hopefully we've got the car to win it. championship feature we just had the formula 500s there just finished off the wind has died down a lot so we've been able to put the drone up and we'll put it up again but i've got to go turn a uh, gopro on callum williamson's car he's starting out of position number eight and uh i spoke to a guy on uh, jock goodyear's crew and he thinks he's a real threat so uh jocks himself is out of uh pole and we'll have a camera facing forward on him as well so really looking forward to this you know it's funny you talk to the drivers and we spoke to as many as we possibly could but they all say, oh, it's just another race. I know Jock says that, but I know that when you're in that position, uh, I haven't started off pole for the Australian Spring Car Championship, but you really start to concentrate and it really starts to hit you that, hey, we've got an opportunity to, to do something big here and something that means a lot to him. So I guarantee you whoever wins tonight will be uh, pretty emotional. Looking forward to seeing what footage we get. Uh, at the end of the day, these guys are super aggressive. They're starting out front, Jock and Lockie. And I mean, they've probably been the stars of the last year or so, other than maybe Jamie. So uh, yeah, I really think, you know, that either of those guys are deserving. Whoever wins this race after 35 laps is, is gonna be deserving. But either way, I know for sure we're gonna see an awesome race with the slide jobs and stuff we see here. Cars are starting to push down now onto the grid and uh, we're getting ready to go green.
around and see what looks best for you. So they're just uh, introducing the drivers now as they push out onto the track. Uh, I just got a text message from Jason Crow, the commentator here. There's 9,300 uh, 9, and something people here. So I think the place holds almost 12,000 from what I got told. So it's pretty close to being sold out. I think Warnable, uh, the classic had uh, 9,000 a couple weeks ago. So I just wanted to show you the racetrack. We're gonna show you after the race, but Guys are going to have to be pretty careful, it's still pretty tacky down here, down low. Uh, I spoke to Ryan Kriggy, uh, who's the team manager of Kriggy Motorsport, and he said that Kerry Madsen is going to be super tight early, he's starting out of position number three. Uh, he told me what they were running and I can't believe how tight they're going, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how Kerry handles the first few laps, whether he drops back a few spots or um, yeah, kind of where he sits you know, as far as uh, position wise. But, um, yeah, the track. Honestly, I think we're in for a, for a, a cracking race because we've got a you know a nice bottom. We've still got a little bit of a you know tacky bottom. You can feel my feet sticking a little bit down the bottom here, but also up top. You know, there's just so much momentum here at Quinana. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know if uh, Lockie and Jock are going to wear each other out. Will Jamie Veal make it through? Other guys are saying that Callum Williamson is the guy probably to beat. Uh, Jason Kendrick's always fast here. David Priolo's up there. Obviously, Kerry Madsen's got a lot of experience. So, really looking forward to uh, what happens here. Let's go green. Jason uh, got into him there at the end. That was a little bit scary, but um, luckily it looks like everyone's all right. We're just clearing the accident now, but we're only six laps in, and Jock Goodyear's leading. He got away to a uh, lead uh, very early on, and um, or he's led the whole race, and I think it was lap four he was into traffic, but um, I think uh, Ian Madsen's the one that stands out right now. He went up to second. I think his tactic was to get to the front straight away, be in contention right from the start, which I think is a great tactic. Not everyone's gonna go for that, but. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what he's like towards the end of the race. I know Kerry Madsen's very tight. Um, can he move forward towards the end of the race? Let's hope so. And I know also, I 
think it was actually Lockie McHugh just passed Ian Madsen uh, for second around the top when the, when the red light came out. The front running cars have stopped just behind me here. Uh, they'll obviously be in um, uh, free air on the restart and uh, it'll be interesting to see who's, who throws slide jobs and, and where cars run. I think, I think we're on for a, for a real race uh, as soon as we go green again. Looks like the, one of the push cars has jumped over Jamie Veal's left rear, so I'm not sure what they're going to do. They haven't dislodged the car yet, they need to get the car off, and uh, I'd say probably replace his left rear. Who knows what other damage there is, but man, he's just had a terrible, terrible night so far. That's scary. We've got, uh, we're just about halfway through the race. We're 17 laps in.
Run qualifying laps, that's why I asked. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool, right? We uh, we almost got one last year in Brisbane, so it's just good to you know, play a little part, help these guys. And, yeah. Got our shocks on his car, so I'm pretty happy about that too. So you won a just, title before? Ah, uh, never. Never. Nah, but it's just uh, just good now. people, mate. You know what I mean? So I can be more happy for these guys here. So it's good day. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You were strong. You could yeah, well, I think. Up. Yeah, I think we were strong every time. Uh, we got to him, there was a, another caution and you know, when you're in clean air off a restart you get a bit of a gap for the first few laps and then I'd run him back down and then another caution would come out so just probably didn't get a long enough green run to get it done but I felt like we were pretty strong so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Hey, Mike. I really want to do it. Come on, Mike, come on, get up here, mate. One. Oh, you think him leading that long and no one was around you? Were you worried about the guys behind you? Oh, not necessarily. If I knew I didn't make too many mistakes, I would have been good. And I really felt like I had a good car. I probably made one mistake the whole race, and that was the opportunity, and it didn't come to me. So. No, look, I didn't really feel like I was going to... I honestly felt like I had a really good car. It was going to be hard to beat me from the day dot. So, yeah, we're just pumped to get it done. And, yeah, now we're just straight one. Did you hear on the race? Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, obviously I knew Lockie. I knew Lockie would be right behind me and I knew he was going to chuck everything at me. He's a good mate of mine. So, no, look, pumped, pumped to get it done. And, yeah, I'm really happy to finish it off. You happy? Oh, man, just look at this. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, Absolutely humbling, so uh, really proud. And, yeah, it's meant to see that great race, and uh, yeah, really, really cool. It's great advertisement for our great sport, sprint car racing. So uh, it's uh, really, really proud of what we've done. We've got a great team: Mikey, my track guy, and Aiden, my my uh, able assistant, and uh, all the other guys. We've got Emma, our ticketing girl. There's so many people that we want to thank, but they all know who they are, and we, we just can't thank them enough. So it's uh, cool to showcase sprint car racing and speedway racing uh, on on a grand scale. So we, and we get to watch it again tomorrow on Seven Plus. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool.
Cool. You happy? I'm I'm happy. Uh, home track and you know third place uh, for all the WA supporters. It's great. At one point, did you think, hey, we got a shot at winning this thing? But it just kind of seemed to spread out there at the end. Yeah, I thought maybe mid race before the restarts we had something there. Um, but on those restarts, those boys were just way too quick. I just couldn't couldn't keep with them to throw a dive bomb in. And once we got momentum, there's no chance uh, run them back in. I just you know one of those tracks where they're gonna they're gonna pound it until they win and I just couldn't keep up with them. Alright that's it that is the 60th Australian Spring Car Championship. Uh, you can't wipe the smile off my face. I absolutely loved it. Uh, a packed crowd, awesome racetrack. This is honestly it's the best case scenario possible for, for this sort of thing. Uh, Look at the crowd, like they come out here tonight, um, you know, for the podium to see Jock win. Jock deserves it 100%. You can't take away from the commitment those guys have put in. Uh, Lewis Hayden, uh, his old man, you know, Jock himself, the rest of the team. Those guys, you know, they've just been so fast. And I mean, probably Lockie was just as deserving, but he didn't get the start and ran second for most of the race. But, um, you know, <laughs> That's how racing goes. Uh, also, Callum to get to third was incredible. Ian Madsen, that was kind of, that kind of broke my heart to see him uh, pull in and, and, you know, pretty upset there. Kerry didn't really seem like much of a factor. He, he was sliding around with uh, Veal for most of it. Uh, Veal obviously got his spot back after uh, getting a flat. Uh, oh, they didn't get a flat, sorry, but they had to, to change tire at least um, on the left rear there after getting run over by the pace car. But um, yeah, just incredible. I wanted to show you the racetrack. There's still people everywhere here. There's just such an incredible vibe here. Um, I wanted to show you the racetrack. This, because uh, we haven't really looked at it too much. We'll just slow down here, but uh, there's a gutter here that stops guys from hitting uh, or shortening the track and running the infield. Uh, there's like a big ledge here, and this again, like not, nothing like what we showed at Knoxville, but this would really unsettle the cars. Um, we actually had a shot from last night where Lockie McHugh, I'm not sure what point it was, where he'd come in and must have been part of the rail, the, the chassis rail, hit it because you just saw sparks fly everywhere. But um, I love that. It's such a better idea than, I mean, it's obviously a little bit more work, but it's nothing crazy. Just create a bit of a, a ledge there, a berm what we, is what we call it, to stop cars from, from running the bottom of the racetrack and shortening the track up. So to me, it's perfect. I think they've got like sensors or cameras in there now, apparently, at this track, which is, which kind of blows my mind. But it's, I mean, it's not completely slick down here at all, by no means, but it's so narrow. You're not gonna enter this narrow uh, on the racetrack. And then as we move our way up, I like to twist my feet around. And you can kind of feel it's a little bit slick, but it's not actually that bad. But it doesn't really come up on camera, but it is so much more banked, I think, uh, towards the top of the track here. And you can just let those right side tires eat up the top here. And that's all Jock did all night, or all in, uh, in the feature race there. Um, he really just made sure he carried as much momentum as possible. And as you saw in our interview with him, he was, it was all just about uh, staying on the top and just running perfect lap times. So, um, Really proud of those guys. Um, again, and just an incredible night, an Australian title. I can't believe how many stoppages there were. Uh, a lot of yellows, a lot of reds. Um, I was worried kind of maybe about fuel a little bit there, but um, in the end, I think the last one was with uh, eight to go with uh, uh, Corbett stopping. And I thought, hey, there's only, I counted, there's only like 11 cars left, so they weren't gonna get into traffic because uh, they've been wrecking so many cars. But. Um, Thanks everyone uh, for, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this content. Coming to Perth, there was over 9,000, almost 9,500 people here uh, just tonight. Incredible event. As I, I, we spoke to Gavin Migro there during the podium, he's pretty stoked at uh, you know, how the whole event was. And I just hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. I really appreciate the support. We absolutely killed it selling merchandise here. And the best part is we're actually coming back next weekend for the Cricky Boys shootout. So. Uh, it's been a hectic time and we still got a couple more weekends. We've got we come back here next weekend and then we're back to Queensland um, But yeah, this is I mean, I absolutely love this place and yeah, thanks for watching everyone